And then I, I jumped into cybersecurity and now like this is my my whole life. This is all I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. So there's this thing. I don't know if you're on Twitter or not. Off and on. So a lot of times years ago on Twitter and everything, there were these talks about you need to be passionate about your job and people saying, well, you don't need to be passionate and this and that. I was like, it's like a middle point. I would hope somebody's passionate about what they want to do because it's going to help them stay good at it. Because granted, I think you're at a, a newer company, mm. but if you go, if you ever leave that company and go to a company that's been established for 50, 60, 70, almost hundred years, you're going to see some of the people that's been there for a long time, that passion been long gone <laughs> and they just getting their check. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody eventually gets there when they realize like it is what it is, that this company's not going to change. I'm, I don't feel like interviewing no more. I got a good enough salary. My kids are growing out the house. My house paid off. I got retirement. Look, I'm doing this until mm -hmm. like, I think these are, these are very much so human things they, they care about. But I think when you're starting off, you can't aff afford that luxury because a lot of times, well, at least I don't see anywhere where people may be at a company for a super long time anymore, unless it's a government type of job. Mm -hmm. I just don't see it possible anymore. Those, I think those days are gone of us uh, sitting around for a very long time. Mm -hmm. But we tell people when you get in this industry, you better make sure that you're staying current and you're learning everything. Cause one mm -hmm. of the main questions they ask the newbies is, Hey, how do you keep up with the threats? Mm -hmm. How do you stay current? So, I just said all that to say, like, you're definitely right. That's how it gets you. Like, you think, oh, because everybody saw, oh, I'm working remote. I'm making mm -hmm. $150,000. I'm going to get my nails done. <laughs> I'm going to get pedicures and massages. So that's what everybody saw because mm -hmm. that was the good grift during the pandemic. Because that's what you show on the TikTok. That's what, you know, get, that's what gets views. That's what gets clicks. Like, that. this is the tech lifestyle. It, it looked good. But you don't see me in my room studying at one thirty in the morning because I just put my baby to bed. Mm -hmm. Y'all right. y'all don't see that part. Yeah. And to be honest, most of the people that's doing the lifestyle content were people that was not in like technical like mm -hmm. security roles. It was a lot of people that was either doing recruiting or tech sales or something else. It was just cool to say, yeah, you know, I'm, I took my meeting down by the beach or whatever. It's like, mm -hmm. they, you ain't see nobody say this what happened when. Uh, you got woke up out of your sleep at 3.30 in the morning because you're on call and it's an incident mm -hmm. on a Saturday. <laughs> so so the time you got it off and your little girl's three months, what, this, what year was this, 2020, 2021? 2022. Okay, 2022. August of 2022 is pretty much when I say my start was. Okay. So what made you choose, what made you choose, I guess, the education route? It was just because... And I'm going a, I'm to a be candid right here or whatever, so I don't take any offense to it. Was it because, okay, hey, I can go back to school, get a master's. This is a, a good enough school. And because I'm getting a master's, I can get some extra money while I'm in school uh, just because of, like you said, a situation, move back home, and you're trying to survive. Like, was that like what you thought about? Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's all I knew. I did not, like, I don't come from, I don't come from a family that has, like, Everybody is educated, you know, mm -hmm. like now, you know, like the younger generation of my family, everybody is going to school and getting their degrees and things like that. But I have over sibling, older siblings and I got my bachelor's first. Like, so I didn't really have the groundwork set for me to be able to see mm -hmm. like, OK, if you want to do something different, take these steps, you know, to avoid jumping into a master's program and not knowing what you're doing. I would I advise anybody to um, <laughs> if you start out on this journey Call up your nearest college and, and just jump in? No, absolutely not. That was crazy. It worked out, but that was a really dumb decision. <laughs> I was really playing roulette with my money. And you can say that, but at the same time, and this is why I like the pushback on universities, they should have prereqs for people to do certain majors. Yeah, and so with mine, I, and this I had no idea at the time, I was my degree is basically a business degree. My master's is in security management. It's not a technical degree at all. So my focus is on cybersecurity. So I had some loosely technical classes, like a, a networking class, things like that. Mm -hmm. But it was really to be able to manage security professionals. It wasn't for me to be able to practice security myself. So I had to do a lot of learning on the back end. Mm -hmm. And that started with learning 
what I was even doing <laughs> at school because I, I really had I didn't know what I signed up for. And that's why I say like it was it was a really dumb decision to just jump into it because I didn't even know what I was doing. I was just taking a chance. Yeah, no, nah, I definitely get that. It's kind of like when people ask me, oh, what should I do or school? I was like, man, do what works for you. But I was like, I do say exceptions don't make the rule. And granted, we'll, I seen you on my post that I made about the help desk stuff. We'll talk about that mm-hmm. too. And and this, this is one of the things that you can run into. And fortunately enough for her, it worked. But a lot of times people will go out to school and then they'll have the degree, but then they don't know anything. But I will tell you the fact of knowing how to pretty much if the most of the people who get paid a lot are less and less technical and more business savvy, they mm-hmm. know the answer now, they understand metrics and they know they know how to talk to other people on a regular level uh, level. And that's why they get paid the big bucks. So knowing how to do that is a skill set within itself. Cause my master's is in technology management. I didn't pick cyber because I was already in cyber. I was like I'm going to keep this a little general in case, like, hey, someone say, you want to be an IT director? You want to do this or that? I was like, it's pretty much a lot of overlap there Mm -hmm. anyway. So that's why I got my technology management for that that very reason. Because initially I got, I wanted to go to school into management because, like, I want to help more of us get jobs. Mm -hmm. And then that's when you kind of get in the corporate long enough to realize, even if I get in management, that's probably not going to happen. Right. Because there are still checks and balances. People still have to sign off on whoever you're bringing on to your team. They have to fit the culture, you know, yep. whatever that means. So. Yeah. So that's when I said, it went until years later until I started the channel. It's like, this is going to be my way that I help more people mm-hmm. get in than I probably would ever do at any job. Mm-hmm. 